So in this video, we're going to look at the sort of general concept of a, of a limit. This is sort of a very broad general sense. We haven't gotten to a definition yet. In fact, we're not even going to attempt a definition until we've spent some time working through a few examples, playing around and trying to get a feel for what's going on when we talk about limits. Okay. Uh, now, one important thing to note is that the setting here for limits and for a lot of calculus, pretty much all of calculus, is we're talking about functions. So the the characters in this play, they're always functions, right? And so the sort of number one prerequisite for being successful in a calculus course is making sure that you have a very solid foundation on functions, right? You understand how functions behave. You know what some basic graphs look like. Uh, you, you're comfortable with function notation, um, inputs versus outputs, things like this, right? Once, you, once you're comfortable with the idea of a function, a lot of this sort of flows very naturally. Um, now, what exactly does a limit tell you, right? So we will talk always about a limit of a function at a point. Um, but in some sense, when we say at a point, um, we, we really mean near a point, okay? Um, so, so the limit, in some sense, it considers um, values of some, let's say, function, let's say f of x, right? So the values, I should say values of f, so values f of x uh, near some point. Uh, let's call that point maybe c, right? And, and what the limit is looking at is the, the limit sort of looking at the behavior of your function um, as you get closer and closer to that point, right? So that's the sense in which we mean near. We mean we're going to look at x values that are close to that point, maybe a little bit closer, a little bit closer, a little bit closer. And, and so you're sort of looking at, one way to think about it is you're looking sort of, you know, at trends. And you're looking at trends in the value of f of x, right? You're trying to see, is there some number that that's headed towards, right? As x gets close to c, where is f of x going, okay? Um, now, the, the thing that a lot of people find frustrating is that um, if you're looking at common functions, um, so let's say something like, f of x equals x squared, um, maybe g of x equals sine x, things like that. Um, the idea of a limit, it seems, I don't know, it seems silly, it seems redundant. Right? Because what you do is, you know, maybe you're, you're looking at the graph of, of something like x squared, right? So, Here's our graph. And you're choosing some point C. Okay. And so we follow that point up to the graph. And we have this point on the graph. Now we know what that corresponding y value is, right? In function notation, that y value is f of C, right? Um, and the reason the idea of, of, of a limit seems redundant is that in many cases the limit, which will be denoted, denoted like this, lim for limit, limit of our function, so limit of f of x as x approaches a, sorry not a, c. So the limit of f of x as x approaches c uh, will actually be the same thing as the value of the function, right? Um, so if you're thinking about something like x squared here, right, you're, you're looking at values of y uh, when x is close to c. And of course, if, um, if x is close to c, x squared is going to be close to c squared. Um, that's, you know, we're pretty comfortable with this idea that as x gets closer and closer to c, of course, 
the output is going to get closer and closer to f of c. And, and we're so used to this that we think this is what happens for pretty much every function. It's always the case that if you want to know what's going on near that point, just plug in the point, right? That's, that's what happens with most of the functions that you see uh, throughout your high school career. And, and even historically, this was, you know, people tended to think of functions in terms of their graph. They didn't make this distinction between, you know, um, a function as, as this kind of rule that associates x values to y values. They, they, they didn't distinguish between that and the graph and the different ways of describing functions. They were all kind of viewed as one and the same thing. And then you don't necessarily encounter situations where this idea of a limit comes up. Um, so what we're going to do in the next few videos is we're going to look at examples where this concept is in fact necessary. And, and generally where it comes up is, is going to be situations where either you, the function is not defined at that number c, so f of c doesn't even exist, so we can't use that as the value. Or maybe f of c is defined, but it doesn't agree with the, the limiting value for the function. These things happen, and, and this is why we need limits. We need limits to deal with situations like this, where functions are, are somewhat more badly behaved. Um, this, uh, this good behavior here has a name, by the way. Uh, this is called continuity. Okay, and towards the, towards the end of the chapter on limits, we'll define uh, what it actually means for a function to be continuous, and we'll see that, in fact, really it just means this. And, and then we'll start to understand, you know, that most of the functions we're used to are, in fact, continuous, and that's why this idea of a limit seems sort of silly at first. Um, but once you get into derivatives, once you get into integrals, you realize that no, in fact, limits are really necessary. Without this language of limits, um, you can't really get anywhere in calculus.